Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to another video uh, on Arena Hacks. My name is Kyle Wagner. Uh, today, I'm just going to be doing uh, another budget-friendly deck. Uh, again, this deck has uh, been focused towards people just getting started. So uh, I've limited a lot of the cards to cards I know you will already have in, in all those pre-constructed decks that you got in the Beginner's Challenges. Uh, so today, we mo I'm we I modified the uh, white the mono white deck to share with you guys. Oh, excuse me. And uh, so we're just gonna take a look at that. I get to some gameplay. Okay, so here's the deck. Um, I think there's a lot of it. Uh, I can't remember what was in the the one mana and one two drops in the original uh, mono white deck. I think the Speaker of the Heavens normally comes in the mono white deck. Um, there may have been anointed choristers, I'm not sure, but this is what I changed it to. Um, the charm strays are just a little more effective because if you happen to get a clump of them, they're actually really good because they give each other counters. So when you have, when you get all four of them, that's really not bad, that bad. Especially if you can get three of them by your second turn, you can have all three of them on the battlefield and you can be attacking with one that you played on your first turn. And at that point, it will be, it'll have two plus one, one, plus one counters on it. So it'll be a 3-3 three, three with lifelink that you're attacking with on your second turn, right? Um, there won't be any games in, the, in this video where I do that. I didn't record them, but there was at least, I think there was one game where I did do that in this deck. I did have uh, three charm strays by my second turn, and it just got, it just gets, kind of gets out of hand. Uh, Giant Killer, you've seen me do in other decks before. Good removal um, with a little creature on the side, all in one card, really good there. Speaker of the Heavens, we've been over before. Uh, he's really good in all life game decks. Hallowed Priest, again, another one you guys should be familiar with, as well as Impassioned Orator. Uh, Pacifisms, um, just because I wanted to uh, get some more removal in here, and when it comes to budget removal, uh, with white, it's kind of hard. Uh, a lot of the good removal uh, in white is is going to be rare cards uh, or mythic rares or stuff like that. Um, but pacifism is a great beginner uh, card. It takes down your opponent's creature. It leaves them unable to attack or block. The only downside to pacifism is if the creature has an ability that your opponent is taking advantage of, pacifism won't stop them from using that ability, right? So, as soon as you're able to maybe get some um, Skyclave Apparations or something like that, maybe put them in in place of pacifisms. Um, just like, like I said, um, yeah, they're just they're, they're really good for just two mana, but uh, can, they can have a big effect. I've shut down my opponent's creatures for an entire game with pacifisms, right? So, yeah, definitely have them in there. They go good with the Archons of Sun's Grace because of their constellations, so they are enchantments. So it helps in that way as well. It gives a little bit of synergy there. Also, Birth of Miletus it just helps uh, bring up your lands if you happen to not be getting enough. Uh, you know, ne never underestimate the Saga enchantments where you get to do so many things for that one-time cost. Uh, never underestimate them. Um, Angel of Vitality, really nice for gaining a little bit of extra life uh, every time you do gain life. Uh, plus, if you get that 25 mark, uh, which is earlier than the 27 mark for uh, Speaker of the Heavens, um, and where was I there? Yeah, 25 mark is a little, but uh, the plus two plus two uh, is actually really cool, uh, especially if by your third turn, if somehow you've managed to gain five life by your third turn, you get this guy out as a, as a four, four flying for three mana, right? So even later game, that's still really potent. Three mana, four, four flyer, not bad at all. Um, Banishing Light, you've seen me use a lot, really good removal. Archon of Sons of Grace, you've seen me use more in the uh, Enchantment and Artifacts uh, deck, the Enchantifacts, that's what I called it, <laughs> Enchantifacts. Um, but yeah, I decided to include a second one in here because that Life Link is really cool. Uh, plus there is a decent amount of enchantments like Banishing Light, Pacifisms, Birth of Miletus. Like if we go in here and we uh, look at our enchantments, we got 12 of them. So, I mean, it's not like a super amount. It's not like the Enchantifax deck, um, but even just for four mana, having a three, four flying with lifelink is actually pretty cool. And that lifelink does help pump up your Hallowed Priest. Um, gaining life is just always good to help you hang in the game longer <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So you got Le Leon and Warleader. Uh, I know I don't know if I've included him in any decks before. 
today uh, that I've shown you anyways. Um, but uh, I know you've definitely seen him. He comes included in the mono white deck that you get. I'm pretty sure is where this guy comes in. So that would have been this deck. This is a modified version of the mono white deck. I tried to make it a little bit more effective while still keeping it uh, good for beginners. Uh, all these cards you should have um, if you've been following along. I mean, at this point, a lot of these cards, I may have uh, used wild cards as you've seen me using them in other decks. Um, but if you've been creating those decks with me on this account, this is my beginner's account, um, then you should have uh, the similar amount of wild cards unless you've used additional um, beyond what I have or if you've bought packs. I haven't spent any real money in this account. So I have in my other account, but that account has way more cards and it's, yeah, doing a lot better. So, um, but yeah, you should be pretty much where I'm at with all this. So you should be able to have everything here except these ones that you see that are, are red here. Uh, this is the only rare wild card we're going to be using in this deck today. And uh, yeah, so you should be pretty easy to construct and relatively easy to play and run. So we are kind of Leon and War Leader. Luminous Broodmoth, again, that's another one you've seen me run in a lot of decks. Uh, any deck that you can make that double white mana spell, the cost there for him, like, as long as you don't have a lot of flying. He's bad in a flyer's deck because his ability is useless. He's just a four mana. 3-4 flyer in a flyer's deck, but the only flying in this deck is actually Archon of Sun's Grace and Angel of Vitality. So that's four flyers besides the Luminous Brood Moth. Everybody else is on the ground. <clears throat> so Bond of Discipline, that is a good game ender, which is why I added a second copy in here uh, as well. The ability to just tap all your opponent's creatures down, giving you a free attack with all your creatures. Always remember that at your opponent's upkeep, they will be able to untap their creatures. So if you attack with everything you have and you don't have Vigilance, they will be able to do a massive attack right back on you. However, the advantage of this is you also get lifelink on all of your creatures until end of turn. So your big attack is gonna gain you a lot of life right? Um, I often try to use this as a game ender. Sometimes it's not like I actually kill my opponent with it, um, but like I gain so much life and do so much damage to them that like usually a turn or two after they either concede or then I do actually get their life total down to zero, right? One of those two things happen usually shortly after I play it uh, effectively too. If you don't have a lot of creatures on the battlefield, this is not that useful, it's a sorcery. So you can't play it before your opponent's combat so that they can't attack you. You can only play it during your main phase. So you have to play it on your pre-combat main phase for it to be effective, but it is really effective. All that extra lifelink. I mean, I did, I had a bunch of little creatures, right? And I put this on, I tapped all my opponent's creatures so my, he couldn't kill my little creatures. Gains so much life and every single one of those life gain, all of a sudden the triggers for, where is he, the Hallow Priest up here? Triggers, it was just like, <laughs> with all these triggers and, him, and he just went up, like he got like five or six plus one plus one counters in that one combat just because of, of this spell right here. All right, so then moving on, we got ECD. Uh, again, another one, uh, classic, you've seen me use it a lot. Uh, it's one of the really good rare cards they give you right off the bat. Uh, a lot of these cards you see coming up in a lot of my decks, if you're comfortable using rare wild cards on them, get more of them, get more ECDs, get more more luminous brood moths, more archons as well. What those don't really appear in a lot of other decks, but you know uh, all these these spells that you see me, these rare spells, the stuff that you see me moving into a lot of. Feel free to use some of your rare card, your rare rare wild cards on them, um, because they're just that's why they're always in. I'm always including them in my decks. They're just really effective. They're really good. So uh, ECD, yeah, again, another one, great removal. Uh, it's another enchantment and it's a saga. So you get to do, you get all this value of doing all these uh, awesome things um, after you play it and after you've already spent the man on it, you're still doing awesome stuff with it. And Victorious Envoy, Victory's Envoy. Um, yeah, getting plus one, plus one counters on all your other creatures. Uh, I'm not sure which deck that you guys get this card given to you, but it comes in one of your decks that you get when you start Arena. So again, it's just another powerful card, uh, a threat that you makes your opponents like, I gotta do something about that, I gotta remove that. So um, that's the Victory's Envoy, and uh, that is the deck. So let's go see how it does. I'll just craft these, and then we'll go see how it does. <clears throat> mm. Guess I'll go with it. Start with 
I guess nothing really, just the planes, <laughs> because I got no one drop. Uh, and then we'll go Impassioned Orator, and then we'll go Birth. So hopefully if the Impassioned Orator is still alive, which he might not be, because my opponent has a lot of red here. Yeah, here he goes, a shock. Surprise! Not really. Let's go birth now. Get a wall token that he can't just shock. Also, he can't shock my enchantment. Yeah, oh, look at him, he's highlighting. What am I going to do? You're not playing a creature, I can't do anything. Oh no. I can't shock it or zap it with something. Yeah. Because he just, all he did was play a land on his turn and do nothing. Is he going to do, oh, he does nothing again. <sighs> he can't just zap it with a shock, but there are spells big enough to take it down. I need something to get damage through to him, though. He's just going to keep zapping. I know he's got more stuff because he left his mana untapped. Let's try this guy first. I do have some removal, so if he starts playing permanence. So obviously he lets it resolve. He has to in order to blow it up with something. With some kind of damage spell, and he doesn't. He literally did nothing that whole turn. He played a land and did nothing else after that. This is interesting. He shocks our first creature. And then just keeps playing mountains. Well, these first two aren't mountains here. And then he does nothing again. This guy is weird. It's like I'm starting to be like, what should I do? This is... Well, I'm going to try this. See if I can get this guy to stick. And he does. Interesting. Is he going to shock it now? How about now? He's got something. He keeps pausing and waiting for him to decide. There's nothing I can do. I have no instance. I have nothing that I want to remove with my hit on my second main phase with my removal. Alright. A little late on that. He should have done that before I created these two guys. Oh no, wait, I thought he hit the Leonin War Leader. He didn't. X. So it would have been three was the best he could do. And he killed my Orator. Right. Uh, exile. I'll make it bigger so I can read it better. <laughs> exile permanent opponent of converted mana cost three or greater. I always got to reread that so I know. Three or greater, I can hit that, which is good. And then I can tax his stuff, and then I can get one of my creatures back next turn. I think ECD is the way to go here. Let's drop a planes first. ECD. And we'll hit up that enchantment there. Swing all in again. This time he's tapped out. Lots of life gain. Things are looking pretty good. I'm glad I played the Leonin War Leader when I did. Because now he's really building up a battlefield. I figured that was coming sooner or later. <laughs> Ooh, here we go, here we go. He's got one, can, he can shock. Then I can go like that, that's four life gain that he's gonna get here. <laughs> There's a trigger. Ah, oh, let's end there. Next turn I'll be getting, I think next turn I will go with, actually I can go with Leon and War Leader next turn. That's the best one to get out of my graveyard with my, uh, with this guy. That's not good, but it doesn't matter. I've got too much, too many attackers. Yeah, let's just swing all in. Blocks there. What else does he have? Nothing. Okay. Sweet. Against a very strange mono red deck, but pulled it off. Next round. Ah, uh, here we are, round two. I don't like the lack of life gain to pump this guy up. 
But I got some removal here, some powerful, uh, yeah, because I need to have power four or greater, so um, we'll see. I was going to say, I better not see a Rooster Drakes again, or I'm going to freak out. <laughs> I could try throwing him down first turn, just to get something else out there. Now, let's go next. Let's just wait. Let's see what kind of deck he's running first. A little more, okay. So he cycles. Now he does, chooses a card of the top three to draw. So that's interesting. He's trying to build his hand up towards something. Oh, here we go with the shock, yeah. Okay. As soon as I play something, oh, let's start killing it. gets that stuff. I doubt he's gonna play anything too meaningful, so I'll just drop this like that. Of course, yeah. Three more instant in your graveyard, and if that's ex yeah, of course he's got a graveyard full of all that stuff because he just happens to draw all that stuff right off the bat. I ne I can never make decks like that run. I never get that lucky to just have oh all my instances would be separated from all my creatures. I would never get the spell, whatever it's called, spell Eater Wolverine. I would never get that Wolverine and a bunch of instants and sorceries like that that I could just fill my graveyard with, right? Like. And say, ah, no, I want to play the card. I don't want to chat. <laughs> but man, that frustrates me seeing other people get that kind of shit luck. No attack. Not yet. I gotta. I should have actually played this on his spell eater there. That was a mistake. I just want to protect these guys so if they die, they come back right away. So he's got three power and it's double strike. He doesn't attack with it. Interesting. So that's good, I think. I think I'm going to throw a pacifism on it. And then let's attack with my brood moth. Start uh, putting at least a little bit of pressure on him. from the sky. I still can't believe how quickly he got that Wolverine with double strike and activating all his ability. Like, just... And now he gets to copy everything he casts. Instance and sorcery. So he's running an instance and sorcery deck. That's pretty obvious. Two cards in hand. I don't want him getting value out of this enchantment. Let's let's exile that enchantment with our banishing light. And then we'll keep hammering him in the sky. What is this tap target creature for two mana? Okay. Interesting. He gets tapped as well. Ah crap. Dang it. That means he's got another shock or something. Or that, yeah. To get rid of it. It's my only creature that was doing any work. I keep... Okay, give me something to kill him with, deck. Come on. Come on, deck. The Luminous Broodmoth was the only thing you gave me to do any damage to him. All I've been doing is removing his stuff. Banishing lights, pacifisms. Alright, deck. Let's go. Mm. This is what I mean, like, like I never get this kind of shit luck that this guy had, getting his wolverines pumped up so fast. Luckily I was able to pacify it, and he didn't attack. That was probably a mistake on his part, but this is stupid. Come on, give me something that I can do something with.
another freaking plane. Yeah, and here he goes. He's down to the same cards and he gets awesome stuff. Playing 8-8s eight and... Like, are you kidding me? Now I need another Banishing Light or Pacifism or something. I don't have a creature in this deck that will win me this game with heat with when he, my opponent's got a freaking 8-8 eight, eight on the board. He's down to one card now. <sighs> Gotta be kidding me. Enough. Come on, Arena. Like <sighs> I do nothing again. I can't stand losing this way. Not like this. Not like this. Just like god it's like this it's like he programmed my deck to give me only lands watch this oh my god every single one of these cards i guarantee are gonna be cards i need yup nope yup yup one of my pacifisms some flyers that was literally all the best stuff i needed right there gone and here we go here's another land off the top you ready here we go of course he's attacking yeah i should have tapped him out pre-combat doesn't matter, this kitty's not doing a whole lot anyways. Are you kidding? It's like he's stacking my deck so that when he mills me, he mills the per- Like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. This isn't even fun. Like, this isn't a game. This is- Alright, well, there's no point in even playing when it's like this. On to the next one. Okay. Some high mana costing stuff. Second turn, third turn. <sighs> Hope for some good card draw. Just a couple low mana spells in the beginning to help us get started, and we should be pretty smooth after that. Maybe a Hallowed Priest or something that benefits from life gain a little bit. Excuse me. <sighs> That's real good. Now give me one more mana so I can start playing these four drops. Anyways, that last game, uh, that's a good example of why I don't really focus too much on, <clears throat> on ranked. Because I lose more often from bad luck than it is from my skill in the game. It's a card game, right? Like, you can only play the cards that are given to you, that are dealt to you. So, that's it. That's all you can do, right? So, <sighs> he can become a threat if his devotion builds up too high. I don't know if I want to use my Banishing Light on it, though. On a we'll save the Banishing Light for later. <clears throat> we'll just go this for now. And... No attack for now. <sighs> Cross our fingers on that land. So I can play my Luminous Brood Moth and I can attack more freely because if they die, they come back with flying. In fact, I would like these guys to have flying. So if they die after I play my food moth, that's exactly what I get. Oh. What is this guy he just played? Do, 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 do. Attacks. Whenever he attacks, untap. No, 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 no. That creature has been man, four four and gains indestructible. Wow, gains indestructible? Untap another target creature you control until end of the turn that creature has base power toughness four four and gains indestructible. <sighs> of course. I have to play because I got to get that land so I get my Luminous Food Moth out. So it looks like next turn he's going to get to take another another round off me because, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be blocking any of that stuff. Although I'll be getting a wall soon, which will help me block some stuff. I think maybe I should uh, play my Banishing Light on this guy. This guy's a good blocker because his toughness will just keep going up and up. But if I take this guy down, his toughness will go down because it's based on devotion to white. Yay, that's not good. Doesn't have trample. I'd rather not block, block with my cat yet. My charm stray yet. I'd like to get my brood moth out first so they can start coming back flying. Oh my god. Hmm. That's fine. Nine damage is a lot right now, but uh, luminous brood moth first, I guess. Now, if my guys die, they come back with except the wall. To it doesn't work on tokens. 
The wall doesn't have flying, but yeah, doesn't matter. What's he doing? Plus one, plus one, or... Yeah, okay. Three or greater, so five, five, indestructible. Let's go. You here, you there. Like that, maybe? I need to banish this guy. I want to play my Archon so bad before playing this enchantment, but I got to get rid of that guy. I just got to. This guy's getting too much, he's got too much health too. Too much stuff that I can't do anything about, which is frustrating. Watch him get landfall triggers like mad too after playing a deck like this. Like where's all the, it's mono white. All the green spell, the only spells that give you a lot of lands and let you play a lot of lands are green. So he can't, he can give this plus one, plus one with the knife, make it a three, three. Can't block with this guy, can only block with my weaker guys. Uh, yeah, this guy can't block this guy. He dies if he blocks that guy. Damn, this sucks. No attack. He's just curving out with all his awesome in your face, pound you. <laughs> And the time when I need to see all of my removal, I see very few of it. One? Is that it? Just the one? Yeah, just the one so far. Some more pacifisms would be nice. A couple pacifisms, maybe a couple, maybe another banishing light, maybe an ECD would be nice, you know. I have a bunch of all of those spells in my deck. A whole bunch of them. They're all there. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Son of a... Poof, gone. And another chump, little chump block or some life gain. Some more removal would be cool. Let's go this way, life gain. These guys can both, both block these guys. Puts the knife on though, then this guy will trade. Gives everybody plus one. Oh no, he gives himself a kitty this time. Doesn't go with the plus one, plus one counters and vigilance. Okay. Uh. Come on! Where's my removal? God, this is getting frustrating. Game after game today. <sighs> this game should be over. I should be beating him by now because I should be getting more variety of cards if my deck is shuffled properly. Ugh. All right, this is going to get real threatening if he doesn't deal with it soon. My guys are going to get real big real fast. So the only thing that can block these two guys are my weaker guys. This guy can't block them. So I'm going to take more damage. Unless I don't want to block. I don't care about this guy too much, so I'll block with him. I don't play, care about this cat, so I'll block with it. I'll attack with these two guys. Got to get his, keep his life total not so freaking high. 26, which is nice, because he probably has a Speaker of the Heavens in this deck. With the life gain that he's been, with, that he's, blah, that he's been getting, he or she. All out attack, that's kind of scary. With six mana untapped, what's he got up his sleeve? Okay, so he's not doing anything, he's just attacking in. I can kill the cat, or I can try to, or just block that thing. Um, do 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 do. I need more removal, come on. He's gonna gain more life here. It's 
four damage. Let's go that way to kill the cat. And I won't block with my Envoy. Him attacking like that, leaving mana untapped, he wants me to block with my Envoy because he's gonna, he has something that he's going to use to kill it. Right? And he's afraid of it because he knows what it's going to do. What it's about to do right at the end of his turn. Yes! Banishing Light. Some more removal. Let's hit this thing now. <laughs> he was at 30 health. See what happens? As soon as I got what well, that, I was just like, where's more removal? I've only seen one all game. Well, two if you can count the giant killer. But as soon as I got what I wanted, it was just... I have so much removal in here. You guys saw the deck overview? <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, I'm keeping this, by the way. <laughs> Just waiting for the opponent to choose. How come I see this guy so much? I got one copy in my deck. I see this guy more often than I see the removal that I usually prefer to see more often. It's not the greatest thing right now, either. It's a little early in the game to see these guys. I want some lower-costing stuff. Low to the ground kind of thing. No? You don't want to trade? He's going to have some kind of weird synergy with that life gain. For every life point he gains, he does that much damage to me or something crazy like that. So let's go to this guy first so we can double pump him. Double pump. Well, that's one pump right now. Here's the next one. And I'm not attacking, so we'll call her end of turn after that. With the auto pass. Away she goes. He does nothing. Doesn't even play a land. Let's go Archon. If he kills my cat, I don't care. It's more life gain, which pumps this guy up more. He may be a little confused why I did that. I just, I don't really care about the cat. It's gonna gain me some life. He's gonna get pumped up more. That's, that's what I was going for. I wanted the life gain. <laughs> Is all I wanted. Ooh, I should have played the Luminous Broodmoth first. Duh. It would have just been swinging him as a 4-4. <sighs> of course he does that. Of course he does. It's so rare I ever get to use, do my awesome stuff. Whenever my opponent plays awesome spells, I can't, I don't have my removal to do anything about it. I play my awesome spells, they just... <laughs> six, six coming at you, you gonna chump that? Evolving Wilds, what's he getting with that? A white mana. So he's got a mostly mono black, gaining some life. Yeah, okay. He eats the food for some life. Let's pacify his guy and attack with everybody. That's devastating. can't attack with that guy either, so his only way of attacking is to have a creature with haste, which with black and white, he, no. Uh, the only other way he can attack is by removing that uh, enchantment. Interesting, so he puts a Fate Fetters on my stuff, but that's okay. I'll just Banishing Light the Fate's Fetters. Yep, he knows what's happening. <laughs> I'm just going to banishing banish his Fate's Fetters and boom. So that was a pretty good game. Just right through it. Quick and easy. Get her done. All right. Let's go on to the wrap up. Okay. So what did you guys think? Do you like the deck? Uh, did it perform the way you expected? I know there was uh, at least a, a, one of those games that was kind of weird. The, the one with that red deck there uh, was a little bit of a weird game. But um, the one where we played the mono red guy 
But uh, other than that, I think it performed uh, pretty well. I know I got frustrated that one game not getting my uh, removal when I needed it, but then I get, did get it eventually, and as soon as I played it, uh, opponent conceded with 30 health points when I had 9, right? So, um, you know, I think the deck's pretty good. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the deck. Um, yeah, I just... It, mono white, uh, the first uh, mono-colored budget deck I've done since the mono red deck. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty effective, it gets the job done, and it should really help all you uh, beginners out there who don't have a lot of cards or wild cards. It should help you get your first few wins and your first few games and challenges. It should help give you a good start, uh, this and any of the other decks I've shared. Um, something coming up on the channel though, I'd like to share with you guys uh, a few things uh, about the future that's coming up. Uh, I am working on a mono blue historic deck not mono blue. mono blue with a splash of white one one card that has a white mana spell might mana cost in it uh, so that's what i've been working on it's historic uh, and it doesn't have a single rare or mythic rare Ooh. so uh stay tuned for that stick around if you want to see that coming up uh, it is historic like i mentioned so you will probably have to use a lot of common and uncommon wild cards for it uh, however, it is a, a pretty effective deck. I've been beaten with decks built like this before. It's very simplistic in the way it works, too. Um, another deck I've been working on is a blue-white Flyers deck. Now, these decks are not budget, like, they're budget-friendly. They have very low rares in it. The Flyers deck has more rares in it than the, uh, uh, than the, uh, the mono blue one I mentioned. It has no rares or mythics unless you include them in lands. And I will be actually, uh, when I do the video, I will be emphasizing that. I'll be like, if you guys want to use rares for your lands in here to help you get that white mana, could be really critical. And those are basically going to be the only rares you use in that deck. Um, and then the Flyers deck is actually a bit more effective. I find it's just a, it's just a stronger deck than the Mono Blue. Um, the Mono Blue, like I said, it's just a very simplistic. It's kind of like that Mono Red deck. It works on a very simple basic basic uh, basis. It's very just... Do these low mana spells always this is how you play right it's kind of the same thing no matter who you're playing against and stuff like that so uh those are a couple things coming up on the channel so stick around for that and in the during the week usually either wednesday or thursdays i will be doing just uh, a video from my other account uh not necessarily just for beginners just showing off some of my decks that i spent a lot of time um, building up rares and mythics and stuff like that and some of the decks i enjoy playing uh, on my other account is what I do midweek and weekends on Sundays. Every Sunday I do a beginner's video and I will continue doing that for the time. I will always do Sunday videos. Um, at a certain point I'm going to run out of uh, beginner stuff to do. Um, and then next year when after rotation everything's going to be different so I'm going to have to remake all those beginner's videos anyways because everything will be different. So none of my <laughs> videos, my beginner videos now won't be valid then because a lot of the cards will have rotated out. Um, but that's not, that's like almost a year away not quite a full year it's going to be into the fall not until the fall that they do rotations so when that happens i'll have to redo all the beginners videos again um but uh yeah that's basically where i'm headed with this channel so stick around if you guys find that stuff interesting and we'll get to that at later dates other than that hit that thumbs up i know you guys are liking this so hit the thumbs up uh <laughs> subscribe if you haven't already uh, especially if you've been watching my videos a lot hit the subscribe button it makes it easier for you to watch my videos, and it helps the channel out. So uh, do those things for me, if you would, guys, please. That'd be awesome, and I'll see you at the next video. Cheers.